My name is Nikki Young, and this is Serial Napper, an international true crime podcast. Welcome to my third episode in a series this month that I like to call Serial Nightmare. I usually do this in October for Halloween, but I guess I just got a little bit too excited, so I decided to bring it back a little bit early. For the month of July, I'll be covering spooky, creepy, and all-around what-the-fuck type cases. But don't worry, for you true crime lovers, I'll continue to sprinkle in some of that too. Just a heads up, there will only be one more spooky episode this month before we wrap up Serial Nightmare, until October at least. And then it will be back to our regular scheduled program as of August 1st. Now, most of you are aware that I'm currently living in Japan, right? Well, one of the biggest surprises to me when I moved here was just how superstitious the Japanese population is. I mean, I consider myself to be fairly superstitious, but there are some things in my opinion that they take way too seriously. For example, the words for four, she, and nine, q, are pronounced similarly to the words for death and suffering. For this reason alone, these numbers are considered to be cursed, and Japanese people will avoid them at all cost, including renting apartments with these numbers or even buying eggs in sets of four. Tonight's episode is a story about a Japanese Kleenex commercial that many believe is cursed. Of course, for research purposes, I had to have a watch of it myself, and yeah, it's pretty dang creepy. I'll have to report back later whether or not I think I've been cursed. I'll have the link to this commercial in my show notes so that you can watch it too, if you dare. Now, if you are too afraid to watch the ad yourself, that's okay. Let me fill you in on what it looks like. Supposedly, there are three versions of the cursed Kleenex ad. I found two, but I have yet to find the third, so if you see it out there, let me know. In the first version, there's a child with red paint all over his body, and he's wearing a green wig. Because the advertisement is called Red Demon, I'm going to assume that the baby is supposed to be some sort of demon. There is a woman sitting beside him wearing all white, maybe his mother, we don't really know, and there's a box of Kleenex set between them. The woman takes a tissue from the box and releases it as it floats away in the wind. Then the words Kleenex appear at the end of the video. It's a really short ad and all of this is happening to a really creepy song. I've seen some people say that they think that the song is almost like a sweet lullaby, but when it's accompanied by the visuals of this demon and this woman in white, I don't know, it feels somewhat sinister. In the second version, the red demon baby takes Kleenex from the box between them and lets it fly away in the wind. All the while, the woman in white is sitting there smiling. Then the words Kleenex appear at the end of the video, and again, the creepy lullaby plays in the background. Hopefully you're able to get a visual here, but <laughs> I really think you need to hear this lullaby with your own ears to get the full effect. So here it is. It's a fine day, people open windows, they leave their houses just for a short while. They walk by the grass and they look at the grass, they look at the sky. It's going to be a fine night tonight, it's going to be a fine day tomorrow. Kleenex tissue this. I really don't know what kind of vibe they were going with for this commercial or how they were wanting to make the viewer feel after watching it, but I doubt many people felt compelled to go out and buy some Kleenex tissue after this. The commercial aired in 1986, the same year I was born, but it doesn't seem like it was running for long because people in Japan apparently also found it creepy and it was pulled from airing. When the commercial first debuted, Japanese television stations and Kleenex's corporate office were both bombarded by phone calls from viewers complaining of nausea and dizziness after watching the commercial. Many parents reported that their young children were having severe night terrors after seeing the ad. Along with these reports, there's been many other rumors surrounding the cursed commercial. Let's talk about what people were saying. So the eerie song that played in the ad is from 1983, and it's called It's a Fine Day by an artist named Jane. 
And what's really strange here is that the song and music video are about war widows and their children losing their men at war. It's actually not creepy, just incredibly sad. I'm not completely shocked that this song was picked up by a company in Japan and used for something completely different than its meanings. This happens all of the time. Things get lost in translation and are used in completely irrelevant and even inappropriate ways all the time. One of the rumors here was that the song was actually a German curse. I couldn't really find anything to support that idea. It was supposedly an old German folk song containing the lyrics, Die, die, everyone is cursed and will be killed. But again, I couldn't really find anything to support this theory. So to me, it just sounds like Japan maybe mistranslated it. The real lyrics go as follows. It's a fine day. People open windows. They leave their houses. Just for a short while, they walk by the grass, and they look at the grass, they look at the sky, it's going to be a fine night tomorrow, it's going to be a fine day tomorrow. So sweet, right? Nothing sinister, evil, or terrifying about these very simple lyrics. But the way that they're sung in this sort of soft, monotone type voice, it almost sounds like the words are supposed to be ironic, because it's not a fine day at all. Either way, the song was released by several different groups over the years, several different singers and bands who put their own little twist on it. Would you believe it was even a rave song at one point? Go check that one out. Another rumor that circulated was that several of the commercial's cast and crew members, including both the baby who played the Red Demon and the woman who played the Mom in White, died shortly after it aired. Some say that the baby later died in a horrible car crash and was even decapitated. As for the woman in white, she was an actress named Keiko Matsuzaka, and there were rumors that she fell pregnant and gave birth to her very own real-life demon baby. This whole idea of Keiko having her own demon baby likely has its roots in the folklore demonic offspring called Sankai. In Japanese mythology, a Sankai is born to a woman when they don't care for the baby during their pregnancy. From just outer appearances alone, it does look similar to a turtle and it has hair growing on its back. As soon as it's born, it starts to crawl on the floor and it attempts to escape underneath the house where the mother lives. If it's not captured and killed right away, it's said to crawl underneath the sleeping mother and kill her. So, there's that. But while Keiko wasn't killed by this Sankai, apparently rumors say she couldn't handle having a demonic baby, so she went crazy and was put into a psychiatric hospital. Other reports say that she also died by suicide. She supposedly hung herself at the asylum. This one was actually very easy to debunk. Keiko is very much alive, and she continues to appear regularly in Japanese TV and film. She's still working as an actress. Hi there. I want to let you know about an exciting podcast called The Breaks Music Show. So what is The Breaks Music Show? The Breaks Music Show is America's most informative new radio show highlighting the world's best unsigned artists. Be sure to find us on your favorite podcast platform as well as YouTube, Rumble, Twitter and more. Remember every Friday is when you can hear interviews and music from three of the best unsigned artists in the world. The Breaks Music Show is a Grebo Inc. production. However, there are still claims about the rest of the cast and the crew behind the scenes, including a cameraman who later burned to death in a freak sauna fire, which is pretty traumatizing in itself. Most of these claims appear to be fabricated and unsubstantiated, but we don't know about all of them, so I'll let you decide for yourself. And it's not only the cast and crew at risk of an untimely death. The next theory surrounding the curse of the Kleenex commercial is that anyone who watches it will either be cursed or die. It's not difficult to see how this one came about. There are several Japanese movies based upon folklore with this exact same plot, like The Ring or The Grudge. It is said that after viewing the commercial, the person will either die in some horrific freak accident 
or they will be led to complete suicide by some unseen evil force. And while this hasn't been proven or backed up in any substantial way, Japan is known to have one of the highest suicide rates in the world. So it's easy to see how people might believe it. I talked a little bit about this in my episode last year regarding the suicide forest. It's a whole other world over here with a ton of pressure and stress to work until it kills you. And you need to be highly successful. You're pressured to be highly successful. Some even believe that suicide is an honorable way out of a situation where you are dishonored. So yes, I'm sure that some people may have completed suicide after having seen the commercial. And yes, there's obviously been people who died after seeing it, but it's likely not because of the commercial itself. I mean, I watched the commercial and I'm still alive so far, but I guess time will tell. There is a YouTuber who wanted to debunk this one, so he watched it on repeat over and over and over again. And reportedly, he's still alive today, so yay to that. This rumor gives me huge The Ring vibes, and apparently, people used to pass around VHS tapes of the commercial and dare each other to watch it. If that doesn't scream Ringu, I don't know what does. The last rumor is the creepiest to me. I'm not sure why, but there's just something about that baby that gives me the heebie-jeebies. Some rumors say that the commercial changes depending on how and when it's viewed. One theory is that the baby, Red Demon, changes into a Blue Demon if you record it and play it back. Which could be easy enough for people to edit and fake, right? Of course, it would have been a lot more complicated back in 1986, when it was made and video editing technology was really terrible. There were some reports from those who viewed it after midnight. In one instance, someone reported that all of the lights in their house went off and the video itself, it just switched off. Personally, I think whoever this happened to is the real MVP because damn, I don't think I could ever watch it at night or in the dark or alone or in any situation that could turn creepy real fast. What's really strange about this Kleenex commercial is that it was never really explained. Like even after people demanded for it to be taken off the air and there were all of these rumors and controversies, nobody from Kleenex or their marketing department stood up to tell us what the commercial was really supposed to show us. This just adds to the mystery. One day the commercial is on the air and the next it's just pulled without explanation. However, another ad seemingly replaced it once it was pulled. Maybe the ad writers just wanted to lighten the mood and they didn't really think things through. But the ad they replaced this one with caused quite a bit of controversy. In the new ad, they used a little Caucasian girl with blonde hair and the girl is dressed as an angel. She's pulling the tissues out of the tissue box and letting them float away in the air. But why would they use a Caucasian child as the angel and a Japanese child as a demon? Even though if the whole thing was just, you know, an innocent mistake, it just seems wrong. And rightly so, people were a little bit peeved about it. Maybe the Japanese child wasn't a demon after all. Maybe he was just dressed as some sort of character. Maybe? But besides the eerie music that plays, the visuals are quite unusual. We talked about the woman in white and the demon baby, but what are they doing and what does it all mean? Some people think that they're supposed to represent good and evil, with the woman in white representing good and the demon baby obviously representing evil, which is unsettling in itself. Children are usually shown to be pure and innocent, so it's kind of odd to depict a child in this way. The woman in white leans over to kiss the demon baby, and then we see her release a tissue as it floats into the air. Some people believe that this is supposed to symbolize that the woman is giving up her purity and letting the darkness win. Which, okay, I can maybe see that, but we'll never know because nobody has clarified it to this day. And even though the ad was pulled in 1986, It resurfaced on YouTube on May 23rd, 2006, and it's logged over a million hits, creeping people out all over again. 
One thing that we do know about the Kleenex commercial is that it got a lot of people talking, like a lot. And while it likely wasn't intended to have people believe that the commercial was cursed or that they could be cursed from watching it, it is quite likely that the whole concept of the commercial actually came from the wildly successful manga series, Yurusei Yatsura. The woman in white was likely supposed to look like a main character named Sakura, and that little demon baby was probably supposed to look like the character named Ten, who was an oni. An oni is a mythical creature from Japanese folklore. He has orange skin, green hair, and a horn protruding from his head. So yeah, sorry to burst your creepy bubble, but this is likely the most logical reasoning behind all of the visuals in the commercial. But again, I'll let you be the judge. Give it a watch if you dare. That's it for me tonight. If you want to reach out, you can find me on Facebook at Serial Mapper. You can also search for me on Apple or Spotify. Check me out on Twitter at Serial underscore Napper or I'm on YouTube, Nikki Young, Serial Napper, all one word. Until next time, sleep tight and don't look under the bed. Bye.